everyone. Welcome back to The Coop with Meyer Hatchery, where we talk all things poultry in hopes of educating chicken keepers and inspiring future flock owners. I'm Tessa. And I'm Jeff. And today we are talking about how to integrate chicks into your flock. Before we get started, did you know that you can save $5 off your next Meyer Hatchery purchase by entering the coupon code the Coop 2022 at checkout. That's T H E C O O P 2022. You know what the best part of chicken keeping is? The chicks. True. That is true. But one of the hardest parts of owning chicks can be helping the new chicks join the existing flock. It's like that scene in every teen movie where it's in the lunchroom and then there's a mean kid that says, you can't sit with us. <laughs> Except in the coop, it's a little more hostile. Chickens can be territorial and protective of each other and their food. Let's go over some steps you can take to ensure a smooth transition from brooder to coop. Absolutely. This is why I love having broody hens raise my chicks, but there are risks with that too. So I'll start there. When your broody hen hatches new chicks or you give her chicks to raise, she's the first threat that your chicks might encounter in their new home. I love using the broody hen box that I made earlier this year because it has a designated space to keep mom and baby safe. Most broody hens embrace motherhood with open wings, but every so often she isn't ready to be a mom and she attacks the chicks. If you choose to let your broody hen introduce the chicks to the flock, you have to really watch them. The first few hours of time together can make or break the relationship they have. Make sure they're separated at first and then slowly let the broody hen introduce the chicks to the rest of the flock on her timeline. Make sure she has places to take her chicks to hide if they feel threatened and have separate water and food for them so they don't get trampled at feed time. Now, if you've raised your chicks in a brooder, there are a few ways you can introduce them to your existing flock, right? One way to have success is introducing the chicks when the rest of the flock are free ranging. Using chicken wire, create a small circular pen for your chicks in the area where the birds spend a lot of time. This way the chicks can experience the outdoor safely and the older chickens can see them without being able to touch them. You know, I've done that with a puppy playpen. Since I've used that to brood chicks before, I just unzip the bottom off of it and then put them outside during the day, every day for about a week. You do have to make sure that the outside temperatures are age appropriate for your chicks though. Usually that coincides with moving them into the coop. And that should be actually step one. Don't move your chicks outside until they're old enough to be outside in the, in the temperatures for the day and night, which is when they are fully feathered, which is about four to five weeks old. There are already so many things that can take your chicks. Don't let it be a chilly night. So Tessa, once the older birds have been able to see the chicks for a few days, how can you make sure that they will safely live together? I don't like having my chicks in the house for very long, so I have a few steps for this process. The chicks spend about two weeks inside the house in a brooder before moving them to an outside brooder. Even though the older birds can't see or touch the chicks at this stage, they can hear them. And I feel like that helps prepare them for the chirping noise of the babies. When the chicks are able to come outside during the day, which depending on the time of year could be the same day or maybe a few weeks later, I open the door to their outside brooder and then wire off a play yard for them. If they get scared, they run back into their brooder. I let this go on until the birds are close in size to their new flock. Sometimes that can take about 10 to 12 weeks, but introducing them sooner can lead to bullying or injury. I've seen hens block smaller birds from accessing the food if they don't consider them part of the flock. And that is as bad as pecking injuries. I agree. It's heartbreaking to lose a pullet for that reason. When it's time, we always move the pullets into the main coop at night so that they can roost together safely and then wake up and go about their business like normal. 
Most of the time, they don't even realize the new birds have integrated in since they have spent so much time listening to them peep and watching them grow up. Now that's a good plan. As someone who has made a lot of poultry mistakes doing trial and error on how to make my coop the perfect home for my chickens, this is the way to do it without causing a ruckus. You can't just drop the chicks in, close the door, and then hope for the best. Well, you can, you're just <laughs> going to return to a big mess. Oh. <laughs> it's just as stressful for the existing hens as it is for the chicks. If they are going to coexist going forward, their introduction needs to be slow and careful. Well, no thank you to the mess. I prefer easing chicken keeping. This is my hobby, and I don't want it to be stressful for me or the birds. Slow and steady wins for me. And with that, we thank you for listening to The Coop. Be sure to subscribe. And if you'd be so kind, drop us a review. Do you have a poultry-related question or topic you'd like us to cover? We want to hear from you. Send us an email to podcast at meyerhatchery.com. <laughs>